Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is about some intake manifolds for a small block Chevy. Now I'm going to go ahead and warn you, probably after I get done talking about these two, you're going to see me cut in and talk about the profiler small block Chevy manifold that I ported. I was going to make it its own independent film, an independent video for you guys to watch, but I thought I'll just tag it on this. Um, I feel like it goes with it and I just... I got too many videos sitting on the camera anyway or on the phone, so I need to get some of them out. So, and I think it works well with this. Just letting you know, you're going to hear me repeat myself about that opening. But anyway, here we go. So, what we have here are two intake manifolds for a small block Chevy that, uh, from AFR. So, and I'll tell you the part numbers and give you some kind of breakdowns on them. First off, this is a part number 4811 from AFR. This one is going on the dyno meal. So the reason why I'm recording this is because I'm getting ready to drop off all the parts to put the dyno meal engine together. So we'll actually get to see the dyno runs from this manifold with a set of AFR 195 um, enforcer heads. It's all roller deal. It should be pretty interesting. And you'll get to see the progression as porting and stuff changes to see how much power this thing makes. So that's the reason why this one's even here. It is not port matched. And what I mean by that is, that's how they look from the factory. Now, AFR offers two different um, styles for this. They have a CNC port match one, which I'll show you in a second, or this. I prefer this because I wanted to get in, um, one of the tests I wanted to do with the dyno mule was to see how much port matching actually picks up as far as actual power, um, and then also versus fully porting, and then also getting rid of the clover leaf, a bunch of other stuff. So anyway, this is the 4811. This one, as far as height-wise, is about the same size as the Super Victor, as far as from your, you know, China rail here to the car pad here. This is their other one that they have for a small block Chevy. This is part number 4810. This one is for a uh, customer. There, I have two I have to do. And this is the, by the way, I've never ported an AFR one yet. Uh, one of these, anyway. I've ported one of their plastic ones, but not one of the, either one of these. This one, you should see a finished version before you ever get to see a finished version of the 4811 because this one, I've got one that's scheduled to be ported to go with a set of heads I've already done and another one that just ported by itself. So you will get to see that if you keep watching my channel. So hopefully you subscribe and stuff. This one um, is different from the 4811, which I'll talk about in a minute. But if you go to Summit, they only offer this one in the 4810 PM, which stands for port match. And this is how they come. This is CNC'd port matched from AFR. And it's not bad. As far as port matches go, uh, it's not that bad. However, it's really small, as you can kind of tell. This is more port matched for like the 195 head, the much smaller stuff. So if you were to put this on, say, your 210 or 220 head, especially your 220, 27, 235 head, you'll figure out that these are kind of small. Um, and you'll have to do additional port matching anyway. The other thing is it left the ridge there, and that's common. It's not as bad as some. There are some, so Edelbrock used to make a CNC port match version that it's uh, where it ends, the port match was horrible. And Brodix has a port match version of their manifolds, and where it ends, theirs is really weird. So this port match, what I mean by being good, is you can kind of see it's almost straight. It's kind of making a slight taper, but Brodix, theirs port match is just almost straight. Like at an angle like this, I don't even see. So the right here is fine, but it actually swoops in, so the machine's getting less of it, but it doesn't leave a ridge. So it's neither one's proper. This I would say is better for sure. So anyway, that's what the port match version looks like. You can see the floor. And you're like, well, they don't clean up everywhere. Well, it's just because the casting you know, shifts, it's not gonna uh, perfectly get it. And you're like, why don't they run all the way through? Um, to port match a man or to CNC port, man, port a manifold would be very tough with tooling because of the angles that you have to be in. It'd be very hard for it to get in there. The way that they can do that is when they cut them apart because then they can go in from the other side. What I mean by that is you'll probably have seen on the internet some manifolds that are split like this. Well, those are easier to port because you can literally chunk them up on the machine. What happened? Uh, you can chunk them up on the machine and because they don't have to worry about hitting this ledge here, the tooling can get further down and can run all the way through. So when it's a two-piece design, they can CNC port it. Like this, no. So anyway, a little bit more extra knowledge for you. Now, what separates these two manifolds? The biggest thing is the height. So this one, height-wise, is the same as a Victor Junior from Elderbrock. 
This one's the same height wise as a Super Vic from Adam Brock. So as you could tell, they're much, much shorter. The other thing is if you notice that the card pad on this 4810, it's also angled down, much like a uh, Victor Jr. compared to this one being straight. You might say, why did they do that? Is that for some airflow advantage? No. Um, I think when Elbrock initially did it, and I know why L uh, AFR is still doing it, it's to get more hood clearance. So for instance, if you have a pad here, most hoods curve down, uh, especially like my 80 Camaro, whenever it had a stock engine in it and stuff, the hood curved down. So it would actually hit towards the front. So to make up for that, they've curved the, the carb pad to make up for that. So the air cleaner kind of follows the contour of the hood. In other words, you get more clearance. So there's that. This one, if you got more room, it's far better. It's much better to have it like this than it is to have it like this. The other way you could tell is a huge difference if I look at it from the top view. So if I look at the top view on this thing, hopefully I can get you right, see what I mean? This is the 4811, obviously, but look at this one. This is the 4810. And if you look at the top view, these runners look way fatter. So let's just take a little look. You can look how much fatter they look compared to this. These don't look near as wide and these look so much fatter, right? Well, that's the reason why is because they've smushed it down. So instead of the runners coming up at an angle like they should, like this one is, instead they just come this way. So because they're out this way, instead of raising up, it makes them look fatter, but the actual, if you measure the inside, they're exactly the same. You may be asking yourself is, and actually this is even smaller as far as cross sections because I didn't measure, this cross section here is smaller than that one, much like a Super Victor versus Victor Jr. However, the reason why they even look bigger is because this I did measure as well. This is the plenum depth. So I measured from here down to the bottom on the floor. It's the same as this one. The only thing is they brought it down. So since they brought it down, all the runners have to come down with it. However, as you could tell, they still shrunk the, the cross section here. So your area here is smaller than this one. Having it raised up, it opens up a whole bunch more opportunities you also just have more room in this one than you did this one. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't give this one more cross-section because obviously I'm going to end up porting it and will make the match. Because one of the manifolds is going on a 406 that be raced, so I got to make this thing quite a bit bigger. So, and it's kind of the nature of the beast. You may be asking yourself, why don't that customer do that? Again, the, probably the biggest reason why customers buy this 4810 versus buying a 4811 hood clearance. It just is what it is. So if you want hood clearance, there's only a few you can go with. And I think this one's gonna be a vast improvement over the Vic Jr. Now I'm gonna tell you some reasons why. This cloverleaf, I am gonna test on the dyno mule, and one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it off and see what it does. On this one, even though you see me porting it, I'm gonna leave the cloverleaf on, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because of heart, carb, the hood clearance, there just isn't enough. You can't run a spacer plate on most of these people that buy these. They just do not have room. And I know from dyno experience that when you run a tapered four hole spacer, you typically gain power. Since you can't run a spacer on this, this is very similar to the spacer. So the spacer typically has these come off the side and they end about where the flange here would be. But since you can't run a spacer, having these in may actually be better because it's like having the spacer cast into the manifold. So I am gonna actually leave those for at least one of them. And this way he should, it should run better. On this type of deal, I don't know that you need it because you can just add a tapered four hole and be fine. Because typically guys that run this have enough room. This, you don't. So having kind of having the tapered spacer kind of built in seems like a good idea. Now, obviously you're not gonna have the cone through the center and that's a bummer for you guys, but at least you get part of it. So anyway, that's these two manifolds. Hopefully I've answered some questions. I'm gonna. Right now, you'll hear me repeat myself and go to the profiler manifold that I finished sporting. Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarner with Weingarner Racing. Well, good news guys, I finally finished sporting this small block Chevy. I know you're like, ah, another small block Chevy stuff. Uh, finally finished sporting this small block Chevy profiler Wilson manifold. And I know some of you that are kind of new to the channel or don't know enough about me, are like, I know anything about this manifold. It says, hey, it doesn't need to be ported. It's perfect the way it is out of the box. Uh, profile, uh, Wilson did it. Uh, no, quite frankly, no. Uh, very unhappy with a lot of it. So 
I'll kind of tell you about some of the stuff. One of the things you're probably gonna notice is these are the dividers. And you're probably looking at me like, God dang, those are knife edged. Uh, they are very thin because they come very thin from the factory. I didn't thin them down anymore. So in other words, I didn't make this any narrower. I did round the corner instead of leaving it in a square edge, but I did not thin that out. I did not try to get any more area on this side at all. That's pretty much how, exactly how they came. The port work really came from, let me go to a pointer. No, no, sorry for the delay. There we go. The, most of the work came from right here, this top part here and up and in. And let me explain. It looks like when they designed this manifold, they literally did a Super Victor, ported it, and then they put a regular spacer on it and rounded the edges, and then they cast it from that because that's what it feels like to me because there was a huge ledge that's here and didn't make any sense at all, same with here. So all the way around, you can see where it's been blended in and a better transition through this, and you can see so much that it broke through here. In case you know what that is, that's that hole right here. That's that spot. And yes, I did it on this side too, as you can see a better one there. You might say, what's these holes for? Well, when they do the machining process on the intake manifolds, um, how they locate it on their fixture to do the machining varies by manufacturers and profiler for whatever reason decides to do it on the carb pad. Um, for instance, most people do, or most companies, will actually use down here, they'll have a dowel here and another one here, and it's actually an imprint hole. Um, so it'll be at like a little spot in here and a little spot in here. So when they set it down on those, then the machine can start doing all of its milling and stuff. Instead of being this way, where they sit it on here and then start doing it. Um, yeah, I don't understand that. It, is there anything to worry about? No, the gasket will cover all the way around this and this whole thing will be sealed up by the gasket and carbs, so no big deal. But, but I'll show you this. Now I do use a burr finish on the floors. Uh, that does help atomization because it's gonna fall, the suspension will fall down, not fall up. This little weird spot you see here, it's gonna look like I did that. Nope, that's how it comes from the factory. I just left all that. So basically the biggest thing is, is getting this side better and really the transition at the top and that's it. I also did the porting to match the intake that was on the opening there. So it's gonna go on a 1206. It's also going on some ported profiler heads. So it's be kind of an interesting deal. So anyway, I thought I'd show you that real quick. Um, there's what the finished product finally looks like. So if you're like, oh my gosh, it's so smooth. You shouldn't have done that. Uh, and that's 40 grit. So it's not entirely as smooth as you'd think. So, I mean, yeah, I can make it rougher, but then I have to deal with people who are like, that looks horrible. Cause some of you are looking at the floor already like, that looks horrible. But anyway, there's the intake. Do I think it's a great intake? It's probably pretty good, but I wouldn't say it's my favorite. Um, still to this day, if you have hood clearance and you're anything 400 cubic inch up and you want a 4150 carb flange, 2892 ported to me is the ticket. Um, under 400 cubic inch, then there's a, several different options to choose from that are pretty good. If you're limited on hood clearance, there's other ones that are good too, much better. So this one falls really right in the middle if you're asking me. There's definitely ones like a port that are worse and there's definitely ones like a port that are better. So this is like the middle to me. It does have some advantages, I will say. It has bosses for fuel injection, which that's pretty cool. So all you have to do is take it to a machine shop and they can drill out these holes for the fuel injection injectors to go in. And then you can just weld the tab on for your um, fuel rail and or just really drill and tap it as long as you have something there to hold on to it. And that's it. So at least it has a provisions for it. So that's nice because a lot of new ones don't. I also like that it has a notch out here because if you're doing the Brodix, Dragon Slayer, Track 1, those type of heads, usually they have a water passage that's right in this area and usually you have to grind to make that clear. So that's nice. They do have a boss back here for the four, quarter, uh, four corner um, cooling system. However, they didn't tap it. I don't know why. To me, and this is me ramble rant, every small block Chevy manifold should have these at least tapped for you. You should have, because it's not that much more work for a company to drill, tap, drill, tap, um, just so you have the option if you so choose to do so. It, to me, it's not at all a major big thing to do on the machine um, if you're already doing all this other work. Doing it after, like now, that sucks. It It's not a huge pain, but it shouldn't have to be done. It's much easier to just do it when you're doing all this. 
was an extra like two minutes on the machine. Because compared to now where it's like chuck it up, get it all straight, you're gonna be out 15, 20 minutes probably. So I don't understand that. Yeah, the boss is tapping to do it. Otherwise, why'd you cast them? Anyway, uh, everything else looks pretty nice though. So there you go, there's my take of it and all done. Remember, I know Superman, you guys take care.